Hey guys, it's Tara here. Today I kind of wanted to go over um, how I keep track of my mail, uh, my mail log in my bullet journal, um, and then if I have the time, I kind of wanted to show you how I keep track of it on my computer. Um, I have spreadsheet files and a folder dedicated to all the mail that I send and receive. I scan in everything I send and receive and uh, keep track of it digitally that way because um, I'm kind of paranoid about losing everything or just losing all of the physical aspects of it. Um, I think that would be kind of devastating. So having that digital backup is just kind of a peace of mind for me. Um, but to start, I do keep track of all of my mail in my bullet journal. I have a little mail log here um, that I've been using for quite a few months now, um, since last year at least, I think, or yeah, last year. Um, but anyway, so this is my most recent version. Um, it's totally full as you can see. So on it, I have who it's coming, who the mail is coming from, where they're from, when I received it, um, and then these two are for when I replied. So when I wrote the reply and when I sent the reply, um, those are usually two very different numbers. Like if you see over here, I have some mail I wrote um, April 2nd, <laughs> and I didn't send it until May 30th because that's how I roll. Um, but And then I have a few letters that I still need to reply to. Um, I was considering changing up this format because uh, it doesn't quite match my spreadsheet. In my spreadsheet, I also track for the received mail when the person wrote it and the postmark, postmark date, as well as when I received it. Um, so I kind of wanted to somehow incorporate that into this here so I wouldn't have to like look at the actual piece of mail when I'm updating my spreadsheet. But I don't want to flip it uh, this way to have the log, and I feel like that's the only way... I would have enough space to do that because I also do really like to include when I sent it because I'm really bad about updating my sent mail spreadsheet. So having this information here in, in my book is a lot easier for me to just quickly write it down instead of um, writing it. I usually write, write it on a po post it or something if I didn't have this and I usually lose those. And so just keeping it all in one place is a lot easier for me, but I'm not going to be able to include what exactly is on my spreadsheet, which isn't really that big of a deal because I do, like I said, I scan in my mail so I can look at that copy um, while I am updating my spreadsheet, which really only happens every year, maybe. I get a little weird about it and I go through and I update it. I'm currently going through and just making sure I have everything there because there have been very long stretches of time where I just don't update it whatsoever and I'm like eh, it doesn't matter and then I'm like oh my god it matters a lot so that's just that's just me and how I do things um, but yeah so I have this completely full now and I need to make another version of it here in this journal and then I'm just gonna call it my mail log because I do include stuff that I've just sent out that are for swaps not that necessarily a reply to something so it's not really I don't know it's not really like a two write log. <laughs> it's just what I'm receiving, what I'm sending, and yeah. So I'm going to go through and add a new log here in my journal so I can keep on track of things. Oh, right, so uh, for the columns I have name, location, received, written, and sent. Uh, um, pretty simple, pretty basic stuff, but I I don't think I'm going to include actually any title or anything. I just think I'm going to just get into it and write out the columns. So for the name I have uh, six dots, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the seventh one there will be a line. Um, same thing for location, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh one I'll have a line. Uh, received is four, one, two, three, four, and a line. Uh, written, one, two, three, four, and a line. And then the last one is just sent, which is not going to have a a line at the end there. Um, if I can find my ruler. And so what I just do is I go through and I just make a bunch of lines and then I add in all of the words. Words. All right, so that's one side done. Um, at the top here, I would just add the information for what each column is. So I'm just going to do that. I don't know. 
I think I want to do it in a different kind of color, but I don't really have anything. So I'm going to just use this Artist Loft that's kind of kind of a pinky color, um, just so it's kind of different than the other two pens I have here and it doesn't blend in. So we have name, location, received, written, And then I'm gonna do the other side as well. And as you can see, this is really messy, but really once you start filling it in, you don't really notice it. It's just, it's a big, big whole mess anyway. So whatever. So there you have it. It's a very simple little log. Uh, it's just kind of tedious to make all the lines. So as I receive stuff or send stuff out, I just fill in each column. Um, and then eventually it fills all the way up and I make a new one. Um, and then also at some point I go through this and I update my mail log with the information. So for making this in your own journal, um, the seventh dot you have a line, the 14th dot there's another line, 19th dot, and 24th dot. And then I don't put a line on the last column because that's just too much effort. I, I do a line for every single row. Um, if you have larger handwriting or you want more space, you can certainly alter that. But I don't really need that much space, so perfect. So this is a version of my mail folder of, and how I catalog my mail digitally. Um, this is a copy of my actual folder because in my actual folder I do have people's last names and addresses and I just don't want to kind of blast that information on the internet without any sort of permission. Um, so I just did a little copy and just copied over a few files just to kind of give you an idea of how I do this. So I have a receive folder and a sent folder. I have four spreadsheets. Um, I have spreadsheets for all the mail I receive from people who live in the United States, a spreadsheet for all the mail I've received from people who live outside of the United States, a spreadsheet for the mail I've sent to people within the United States, and a spreadsheet for um, what I've sent to people outside of the United States. Okay, so to start off, we'll look at my received domestic. So this is everything sent to me from people who live within the United States. Um, I do have the states listed here, and if you scroll down, there's more, but I didn't edit all of those, so I'm not going to go through that since there's um, some uh, last names listed there. So you have, I don't have anything from Alaska, so you know if you watch this and want to send me something from Alaska, feel free. But anyway, so I have the state name and then the abbreviation. Um, I have a section for postcards and then a section for letters. Um, and then I have description, sent from, source, written, postmarked, and received as the categories up top. And that's just a, a fixed uh, row, so it always scrolls and I know what I'm looking at if I... I don't know why I wouldn't, but <laughs> it's there. Um, so I write the description. For postcards, it's a little bit easier. If it's like an actual postcard, you have something like a description of it on the back of the postcard that you can type in or just um, as much as I can like art <laughs> who knows what that looks like but it's not really that big of a deal um, when I was younger I did used to link to the actual image file from here um, so I could click this and it would open up probably wouldn't now because I've <laughs> yeah see I don't have that same folder anymore I've moved my folders around so that doesn't work um, but I am not doing this any longer and just too much work and I've never ever gone into a spreadsheet and been like, hey, I want to see what this looks like. I can just look it up easily from my file itself in the folder. And then, so sent from is the person sending me the item. Source is where it's from. So like I have swap bot, send something, post crossing, more swap bot, um, Instagram, and then like friend or family. When it was written, uh, unfortunately a lot of people don't date what they're sending out, so this column is oftentimes empty, but on the rare occasion somebody does date it, I do add that here. And then postmark, again, not always reliable, I can't always read it, so like this one for instance is September 2012, I don't know, I couldn't read the actual day of the postmark, um, I don't have a postmark here, and then the same thing here is January 2010, um, and then received also, more reliable these days, when I was younger, I didn't really keep track of it as much as I do now. 
so some of them are not filled in but for the most part they are there and then if I don't have the actual day like if I was out of town and I got something I would just put the month and the year um, so yeah it's a it it really is a lot of the stuff that I have in my my physical journal mail log just in spreadsheet form digitally so if I ever lose my journal or you know if my house catches on fire and I lose everything I do have a digital backup of it all um, and then as you see here I do have links here as well these go to their profile um, I was doing that for a little bit again not useful too much time to waste to do that and I just don't do it anymore and then same here is like this actual swap itself so if I clicked on that it would send me eventually to the website and like the same thing with all of this I just I've never gone into a spreadsheet and clicked on that for any reason whatsoever um, I've only ever clicked on it by accident when I'm like trying to update these spreadsheets and it's more annoying than anything so I'm going through and I'm kinda deleting all of these um, as I see them so this is the the swap there and as you see it takes a very long time for that to open and it's just too much time not useful bye bye I'm getting rid of it and then the same thing for the letters um, for the description I've I mean I, I haven't gone through and updated these old ones I could look at the file itself and figure out what was sent to me but at the same time most of them are just write letter even if something's included in it unless it's something really big I wouldn't I don't really note anything besides like letter um, it's just not that important to me but I also note who it's from where I know them so like this was a pin pal for a little bit from the good mail day blog when they had like a call for for pin pals you could like comment and leave your address and people would send you mail so I had a few pin pals from that um, and then I do abbreviate sometimes I want to I really want to go through all of these spreadsheets and make them very consistent in that aspect. Um, I don't, I don't really care if they're like a pin pal or not. So I used to put it, but you know, you you fall off writing to some people, and they were a pin pal once, but they're not anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then just the same thing here. Letters are a little bit better for people dating them, so I have a little bit more information there. Um, postmarked and received and that's it and it really is um, the same thing for all of these spreadsheets it's the same format I have the country here I only add a country when um, when I receive from it so I'm not listing every single country ever <laughs> uh, because that would be crazy and I'm not going to receive mail from every single country so I only list it if I have received from it um, and I have a section for postcards, a section for letters, and it's just the same thing. Description, who sent it, where they're from. Um, as you can see, most of my international mail is from Post Crossing, and when I was really active in that, but not so much anymore. Um, and then when they wrote it, when it was postmarked, and when it was received by me. And then the same thing for the letters, it's all similar format. Um, and then for the sent mail it is the same I have a little bit of different categories it's still description sent to who I'm sending it to the source where I know them from when I wrote it when I sent it and I had a marked received column because I used to do a lot of like swap bots uh, swap bot swaps and post crossing which they can mark when they received it and for some reason I thought that was useful information for me but it's not really and I've just never deleted this column so it just kind of sits there it is whatever but I can't have like a postmark or anything so um, but yeah so just description who I sent it to where I know them when I wrote it and when I sent it and that information isn't always there for me because I wrote it down at one point and lost <laughs> lost their like little piece of paper that I write it down on or I just never never made a point to make note of when I wrote something or when I sent something but for the most part I'm pretty good about it yeah. yeah so those are my spreadsheets like I said they're all really similar formats I do have um, blank spreadsheets with the, the layout already set up so I'll probably include those um, for you guys to download if you want to um, but yeah so in the receive folder I have a subfolder for post crossing one for post crossing direct swap bot 
and then I have all of my pin pal folders. So in my actual folder, I have like over 200 of these pin pal folders. Um, not everybody is like an active pin pal at any uh, at this point in my life, but I keep them all just generally in the sub the, as a subfolder of the received instead of like uh, like active or non-active because I like to be able to go through and just type a name and pull up that information. Um, I used to have like pin pals from Good Mail Day, pin pals from se Send Something, um, and stuff like that, like as subfolders, and it was just kind of really annoying to click through everything, so I just keep everybody separate, unless it's a general general place that I'm not like continuing swapping with. So like Post Crossing, I have, um, as the file name, I have the Post Crossing ID. I think this is when it was, uh, like the date, either like a postmark, or if they dated it, or when I received it. I'm not really sure what that date is from. Um, and then who sent it and their username. And then this will open up as a PDF that I've scanned in. So this is the front of the postcard and the back of the postcard. Um, and so here is it is the date of when or when they dated the postcard. So 7-17-2011 is what I have there. So really for this date, it, it can vary. It can be if they dated the postcard, I put that date. If I had a postmark date, I put that. Um, and then if I didn't have any date whatsoever, I would probably put when I received it. But these are all just uh, PDF files from the scan that I put in, or that I scanned into my computer. Um, and then post crossing direct is a little bit different. Some a lot of when I when I live in Vegas and when I lived in Rhode Island, uh, a lot of people reach out to me on post crossing, even though I'm not really active there anymore. Um, I am always down for direct swaps so people reach out to me and they ask me for postcards and then we swap. So for this I have subfolders of the people that are sending me um, the postcard and then the file name is just the date again when they maybe dated the postcard or the postmark itself. Um, so there is that postcard and that's about it there. So just the person who sent it, their username, and where they're from. All right, and then we have the swap bot folder. Um, this is then broken down into years. So I didn't pull over all my folders, but I have, I think, dating back to like 2008 or 2009. Um, I just brought over these two. So I have 2016, 2017. And then the subfolders in here are the swap name. These are all from a group that's mailed pals something. I forget what the U stands for, but it's a group that I am involved with in SwapBot. Um, and then the swap name. Um, and then in there I have the actual files. So for some things I can't scan in. Um, I just use a little document scanner. It's a Brother uh, DS620. Um, it can't really scan thicker things. It's uh, just a, just really just for documents. So a lot of times for swaps and stuff I can't scan in the actual received item because they're a little bit more bulky. Um, and that's my swap bot folder. And then for the pin pal folders I do their name, how I know them, which is just abbreviation like BR. It was like when I had a blog, blog people who read my blog would send me mail so I'd know them through my blog. Um, LEP was the League of Extraordinary Pin Pals that I was involved in for a little bit when I lived in Rhode Island. SS is Send Something. And then like Instagram would be IG. And then I also put their address here. And I don't really keep it updated, so if they changed their address or moved, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily go through and update this unless I really thought about it. But I don't really think about it and I don't do it. But it's just nice to have the address here for me. I can just if I can't if I can't remember their address I can just go into this folder and see it um, and then from there in the pin pal I have in the pin pal folder itself I have subfolders for the year um, and then whatever was sent to me in that year I have it a little bit differently with my sent so the subfolders are like the day that I sent the item um, I'm kind of moving towards that for my received mail but I it's just it's a lot of work because there's so much to go through and this is how I had it set up before and that's just kind of what I what I did 
Okay, so in this in the 2016 subfolder, it's going to be everything that I received from this person in 2016, and the file name is just going to be the date that um, that they either dated the the letter, the postcard, whatever, or the postmark, or when I received it. Ideally, I like to go through go with when they dated it, um, but that's just kind of the order. If they don't have a date, then I use a postmark. If there's no postmark, then I use when I received it, and that's just kind of how I've always done it. For instance, for these files, this is all from one day, uh, but I couldn't scan it in because it was a little bit of a bulkier thing, so I had to do a bunch of different files. When I have a lot of free time, I want to go through and just convert these all to PDF so I can just scroll through it rather than having a billion files from the same mail item. I prefer the PDF format because it just is all in one place. Um, I can just scroll, scroll through and see what was sent to me. So that's nice. I really like that, and one day I will convert all of these image files to PDF files, but not anytime soon. And yeah, so in this one I'm, I'm going through, I've already gone through and did what I wanted to do here, so instead of just having a general year folder, it's going to be date specific. And another thing is that I do the year, the month, and the day. I like to be able to see by year, so I like to be able to sort by year, so I do the year first, then the month, and then the day. Um, and that's just just for sorting purposes. I don't usually write my dates like that at all. <laughs> and then the sent folder. So this is really the same setup. I have the general folders for like groups I'm a part of or anything like that. So like the mail pals, Instagram. I have post crossing, post crossing direct, and swap bot. Um, and this is a new one. So I just have the 2017 subfolder and then the swap name itself, um, and then the date that I sent to my partners. And then we have post crossing, which is really the same. These are all image files because when I was younger I didn't scan in, I just took pictures. And I only took the picture of the front of the postcard, not the back. Um, I don't know why this is like that. And then for these files I just have the post crossing ID, the date, and then the person I sent it to. And then same thing for post crossing, I have the years and then the people that I've sent to. And then the same thing for Swapbot is the received, it's just the general year folder, then the swaps itself, and then another subfolder for the day that I sent it. Um, and then in my sent folder I also have pin pal subfolders. I don't include the address on these ones, I'm not really sure why. It's just what I, how I <laughs> ended up doing this, but for these I just do their name, where they're from, and how I know them. And so in, in the pin pal subfolders is the date that I sent whatever I sent to that person, and then just the, um, just the file of the scanned item. Usually a letter, sometimes a postcard, but yeah, it's uh. It's just kind of how I do it. So, just received, sent, and then my spreadsheets. It is uh, a lot of work. I don't. I do it kind of in batches. So when I send out a bunch of letters, I have a pile of stuff that I need to scan in, and then I scan it in and I save it to the appropriate folder. Um, I don't typically update my spreadsheet at that time because I'm. I really hate updating the spreadsheet. But I do do it. I'm going through. I went through and I updated it just recently, with everything. And my big project now is going to go through all of my sent and receive folders and kind of cross-reference them to my spreadsheets and make sure I have everything listed from like previous years because there's I know there's been points where I've just I haven't updated it whatsoever and I never went back and updated it so I just want to make sure all the information is there and have everything just sort it out and know in my in my brain that everything is there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how I that's how I catalog everything digitally, how I keep track of it in my journal. And, and that's it. I hope you guys it, I hope you guys found this helpful in some way. And like I said, I'll include the blank spreadsheets um, as downloads in the description so you can download those and use them for yourself if you'd like. And if you guys have any questions about how I do things, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. And if you have any better ideas of how I organize things, do let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.